Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for a get ready with me. I'm going to do some just some boring everyday sort of makeup, um, but I mainly want to do this to chat about working from home. So right now there's a pandemic going on. I'm not going to discuss it. I know it's one of those topics that some people really want to discuss. Other people don't want to hear anything about. People feel like they're being bombarded with it. it can be very stressful. I know, so I don't actually want to discuss that at all. Um, I just know that a lot of people right now are dealing with having to work from home um, and being quite like isolated. And um, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about working from home and saying that, you know, a lot of people do it occasionally, but most people don't do it full time. And the people that do do it full time are like the equivalent of like marathon runners. And I'm like, that's me. I'm a marathon runner. I work from home all the time. So um, I thought what I'll do is put out the topic and see if you guys want to talk about, I don't know, how I cope with working from home, what I found to be sort of helpful, um, what my sort of daily routines are, what makeup I like to wear on a daily basis, all that kind of stuff, um, because I have been doing it for a few years now and I know it is a big thing to adapt to and it can be quite hard, but um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about working from home and a lot of people struggle because um, they have these misconceptions. So I thought what I'll do is uh, do an example of sort of everyday makeup that I would wear, which is generally pretty light basic makeup using my tub of crap um, and then just going through some topics that you guys have brought up and giving my thoughts on it. Now, when I talk about doing my makeup, um, I'm probably not even going to really talk too much about the products I'm using. I will list them in the description box, but it's more like I don't want to break up the chat too much. So I don't want to be like, now I'm using this sponge with blah, blah, blah. I'll just list in the description box if I haven't shown it to you. Um, and this is sort of like my um, minimal makeup look. So because I do create videos, like yesterday we were filming Beauty News, so of course I was wearing a full face, uh, which takes a lot longer to create. But um, on days where I'm not filming, which is would have been today, but I decided to film, um, this is the kind of makeup that I do, and I do it for a reason, and I'll talk about that when we get to it. All right, so some of the topics that I'm gonna talk about, because these are what you guys brought up, um, definitely routine, um, so how you keep a routine, what my routine is, um, how to balance work life kind of stuff, how to stay motivated is a huge question that a lot of people have, um, how to turn off or switch off at the end of the day, um, and then some sort of best practices. Um, so I'll try to cover all of that. Um, some of them I don't might not be able to help you, but this is just my experience. Um, but let's start with sort of my routine. And while we do that, I'm going to shuffle in my uh, sort of random makeup and um, project pan sort of tub. So um, pretty much I think my routine, I, I do have the same things that I do every morning, but my week, because my job varies, so I have different things I need to do every day, I sort of have a routine that I maintain every morning. And then I sort of have a weekly routine. So what I do every morning is I get up sort of between 8 and 8.30. Um, I go do my skincare and everything. I have showers at night. Um, then I have to feed the cats, clean up after the cats and put away the dishes that were in the dishwasher overnight, water the plants. And then I make breakfast and a coffee and I sit down at my computer. Um, and that's when I sort of look at emails. Um, if there's anything urgent, I'll attend to it. Otherwise, um, I'll have my breakfast at my computer. It's what I used to do when I used to go to work anyway. Um, and I and I always um, watch a couple of like YouTube channels that I like to watch while I'm having my breakfast. Of course, I forgot to bring a mirror in here. Um, but generally what I do is I give myself about half an hour to like have my coffee, um, watch whatever I want to watch, look at social media, and then I um, go get dressed, brush my hair, um, and I start work for the day. And I think that's actually really, really important. So I might actually talk about that to start off with. I'm using a lot of concealer because under these lights, I look very red. Um, and I'm also using dirty brushes because in reality, I don't wash my brushes every day. Oh, do I have a sponge? I do, I've got a clean sponge, hooray. So um, what I find is a few people have asked questions about um, like, do you wear makeup every day? Do you get dressed every day? Um, a lot of people were talking about um, just doing their work in their pajamas. 
um, and all that kind of stuff. And I think one thing that is really, really, really important with working at home and you learn this over time is that you have to get dressed and you have to make yourself sort of feel ready for work. And if that involves makeup, put makeup on. You don't need to put a full face of makeup on, but I just feel that for me, if I don't wear makeup, I sort of feel like I'm having a slouch around sort of day. If I stay in my pajamas all day and I don't, don't put a bra on, I feel like I'm in a sort of slouchy mode. So I feel like you have to get get yourself out of that sort of perception or headspace um, and you have to do it by getting dressed. So even if you don't wear much makeup, um, I'm not going to put much like uh, this, this makeup I'm going to do today, besides the fact that I'm talking through it or talking to you, um, it would only take me like 10 to 15 minutes to do. And it's enough for me to feel like I've, I'm starting the day. So makeup is a funny thing because people use it as self-expression. People use it to, um, you know, build confidence, but it also changes the way you sort of feel. And I sort of need a little bit of makeup to feel like I'm ready for work. Also, I find that if you have a job where you are going to be doing conference calls, you don't want to look like you're sick. On like, If you don't wear makeup, don't wear makeup. But if you're the kind of person that normally wears makeup to work, I would say chuck some on, even if you're working at home. Yes, you're not seeing people, but you might be doing conference calls. You might be running down to the shops. You might be going to the post office. People might pop by. Whatever happens, I just feel like it gives you I don't know, the headspace of I'm ready to work. And I feel like a bra does that. I feel like clean underpants does that and clothes does that. I know a lot of people talk about getting from their night pajamas to their day pajamas. You do you, but I still think pajamas are pajamas. So even if you're just like me and wearing a bum top with a food stain and leggings, I still feel like putting clothes on, no matter how comfy the clothes are, it's very important to do. So you don't need to wear like your office attire. If you're the kind of person that wears high heels to work, pencil skirt, red lipstick, like you don't have to go that far, but at the same time, get out of your damn pajamas. It's going to be good for your headspace. It's going to get you into the mode of, oh, I'm actually a productive human. And headspace is really, really important when it comes to working at home. All right. I am actually going to wear um, a powder foundation today because I want to. So we had some questions like uh, Jasmine saying, does it help your mind stay focused when you get dressed, do your hair and makeup, etc." Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just a, it, for some reason, it just puts you in the right frame of mind. It doesn't have to be the right frame of mind to like work, but it just has to be a right frame of mind to not want to go to sleep and not like just lounge around. All right. We've got a point that Zara made, which, um, what are your thoughts about getting ready for the day? I .e. putting on makeup and real clothes when, when working from home. Um, I get it's a bit different for you since you film videos, but I feel like these influencers are shaming me for not wanting to put on makeup when I don't leave my house. Um, look, I think that's a perception. And this is where I think um, the perception of working from home is actually different from the reality. So um, I find that people who work from home only occasionally will have the perception of, yay, I get to sleep in, I get to work in my pajamas, I get to work in bed. Um, I get to, you know, not have to travel and I can do all this really like, I can have a really cushy sort of lazy way of working. And that works if you work from home like one day a month or once in a blue moon, but it doesn't actually work if you do it often. And so people these days are finding that they're going to be working from home for weeks or months and they're going to be doing it every day. And that just does not work. So Influencers aren't trying to give you the perception that you have to put on makeup and clothes, but if you actually want to be productive, at least put on clothes. Um, I think that's very, very important. And makeup is just about if you wear makeup to work or makeup is the kind of thing that makes you feel like you're ready for the day, put a bit of makeup on. Do you need to put a full face? Absolutely not. Um, but it's not like influencers trying to make you feel bad. It is simply, I think because a lot of influencers work from home, they know what works for them. And I can guarantee you, I feel so much better when I put a bit of a face on and clothes on. If I literally sit around in my pajamas with no makeup half the day, I'm not actually very productive in that half of the day. So I think it's very, very important for your frame of mind. I also think it's very, very important to have a workspace. Working in bed is not at all productive. What I like to do in bed is sleep in bed. And so I have the association with bed that if I'm 
in my bed, I'm tired. And the last thing you want to do is try to be motivated to work when you're in a sort of space that reminds you of being tired. So the best thing I ever did was buy a really comfy office chair. Like I know a lot of people can't do this right now, but um, my office chair is the best and it's made such a big difference because I used to find it really uncomfortable sitting at a computer for all day long. Now with my office chair that is designed to be sat on comfortably for over eight hours, it is so much more comfortable and I feel like I am sort of prepared. So I do think you need a workspace, like you need a table or a desk and a comfy chair. Sitting in your pajamas in bed, you're never going to be motivated. So people that often like, I don't know how to stay motivated. They're the ones that are sitting in their pajamas with their slippers and their dressing gowns, sitting in bed being like, hmm, I don't know why I'm not motivated. Yeah, because your body thinks you're into like going into sleep mode. So I think, yeah, it's really, really important to set up a little workstation, even if it's just like in your lounge room or something, have a little designated area that you want to work in and that's comfortable and they can sit in for long periods of time um, and put a damn bra on. Now I'm going to talk about um, winding down at the end of the day before I talk about how to stay sort of more motivated and how to like um, get work done because I think it's sort of when I'm talking about trying to like get ready for work and I'm talking about get dressed put a bit of makeup on, brush your hair, put deodorant on, do that kind of stuff, have a workstation. Um, at the same time, I think it's really important to remove yourself from that designated area and um, do something to distance yourself from work. So I have my study and when I've finished working, what I do is I close the study and I usually even um, go and have a shower and get into my PJs. So that's sort of my mental prompt that I'm no longer in my workroom and I'm now getting into comfy relaxation mode. Uh, even if you want to change into or just wash your face and put a mask on or something um, or I don't know, change into your pajama pants, whatever you happen to do, you got to move spaces. And also I think a really easy prompt for me is to have a shower and get into my PJs. And even if I'm getting to, into my PJs at 6 p.m., I don't give a shit. It sort of prompts me to know that that's like wind down time. So um, I really think it's important to have sort of triggers that your body can like respond to, to be like, okay, cool. I've had my shower. I'm comfy. My makeup's off. Now it's like TV and Netflix and chill time. But I did have a few questions of people like asking how to not oh, like um, put in too many hours or be overworked. And the thing is, I can't really help to like, I can't really help with that because my job, I sort of just do work until the work's done. There are some days where I might be finishing at like 4.30 because I've done the work. And then there are other days where I finish at like 10.30, 11 o'clock at night because the work needs to be get done. So all I try to do is set myself tasks for the day. Some of them are gonna be smaller tasks than um, other days, um, just depending on the day and the work that I have in front of me. Um, but what I tend to do is I, I am the type of person because I work for myself, if I don't get the work done, it doesn't get done. So there are like I I will work long hours to meet my deadlines. But at the same time, if I've met my deadlines and then the next day is pretty free, um, I try to then work in a little bit more sort of me time to compensate for working overtime. So so, yeah, learning how to switch off, um, how, how to trigger yourself into thinking, OK, it's knockoff time. Um, I think that's really important to step away from your computer. But at the same time, um, I think what how I sort of schedule my day instead of having like like a few people asking, do you schedule breaks and do you like what's your routine? And instead of actually scheduling like I'm going to work for four hours and then have a break, I look at it task wise. So um, because I have a bunch of different things I do in a day and I have different deadlines for them. Um, I sort of look at my week ahead and I know what I need to do by what days in that week. Um, and then what I tend to do is um, schedule things just mentally per day. So, for example, I know that um, Wednesdays are full filming days for me. So I pretty much don't schedule anything else in those days because I have to get ready and then we film beauty news and we film other content. We often film for like five or six hours. So I know that that day is pretty much solid for that. And then Wednesday, it's like blanked out for editing beauty news, which sometimes I have to edit till 
quite late at night if it's a big episode. So um, I know that those days I have to keep free. But then on the other days, I sort of look at tasks that I need to do. So what do I need to do by the end of Monday? And if it's only a few tasks, I'll get the urgent ones done in the morning. So I'll like go, okay, this might take two hours to do or three hours to do. Okay, I won't take a break until that task is done. Keep doing your makeup, cat. You're taking your goddamn time. All right, just using project pan stuff. Um, a few people are asking as well, like, um, is it okay to multitask while you're at work? How do you stop being distracted by like housework and other things? So one of the questions was about like, for example, laundry. Would you do laundry while working? And um, the answer to, to that for me would be yes, but I would put the laundry on in the morning, like put it on to wash and then, when it stops, that wouldn't stop me from working. So I don't use it as a way to distract me from working. What I tend to do is go, okay, I know that I have to get this video edited um, today. So I'll do that first thing. And once it's edited and I've done a few little other menial tasks that I need to do for work, then I will hang out the laundry. And if that takes, if that's at two o'clock, if that's at four o'clock, if that's at seven o'clock, doesn't matter. I'm not going to stop my work for the laundry because the laundry can wait. So I guess I sort of triage my day. So I look at the tasks that are most important um, and I will knock those out first and I try to do them before lunch. And then if there's anything like extra, I'll do it after lunch or that's when I start going, okay, now I can hang out the laundry. Now I can go down to the supermarket. Now I can run these errands because I've done the important work that I needed to get done today. So that's sort of how I would um, recommend doing um, your schedule for the day or um, sort of helping with motivation is if you can break down your daily tasks that you need to do or your weekly tasks, I think it's important to do both. So what day do you need to get what done by? And then in each day, just know what you have to get done and prioritize urgency. So what do I urgently need to get done that day and what can wait? And I just feel like if you focus while your motivation is at the highest on those urgent tasks, you can kind of slack off a bit later on, or you can, if you're still really motivated, you can knock out some of the extra work that takes off some pressure from later in the week. Um, or you can then turn to things like, I wanted to start making dinner early, or I want to do the laundry. Uh, I really feel like that's the best way to keep yourself motivated because the problem is that we're not we're not always motivated. You can't be motivated 100% of the time. So I feel like do the really important stuff that needs to get done when you're sort of in prime, I don't know, energy mode or motivation mode. Um, and then the rest of it can, if you, if you don't even get around to it, if you're like, I'm tired today and I've done what I needed to do, but I can't bother doing more you know, just roll those things, those extra things over to the next day until they actually become urgent. So yeah, I think prioritizing that way is the best way to do it. I, I used to find that when I was studying and a lot of people had questions about how do you study and whatnot. And studying is harder than working from home, in my opinion, because studying, you need to sort of absorb a lot more information. Work, you just sort of do the work. And even if you're a bit zoned out, often you can do the work. Um, but with studying, I find if you sort of break down again, look at your week, what you have to get done by that week. If it's an assignment, break the assignment down um, into manageable parts and then make sure you get those manageable parts done each day. And the quicker you do them, the more time you have something to, you have to do something else. The problem is when you just sort of like think the task is so big that you sort of, you just dwell on it and then you just put it off, put it off, put it off. Um, whereas if you chip it away or you, you break it down into manageable parts, you can find, okay, if it took me an hour to read that chapter and then another two hours to do that, like component of that assignment, you end up going, well, that was only three hours of work. So if I just get it done at 9am when I'm fresh and I'm ready to go by after lunch, you have either time to get ahead of the next day's work or take the afternoon off. And then um, a few people were asking about like socializing as well. So, um, you know, I think people are concerned that like socializing is going to distract them. I find personally, look, I think you need a balance, especially if you're working from home. One problem is I'm just going with my highlighter, my highlighter duo for eyeshadow today because I feel like it. Um, I think one problem that you need to balance is actually socializing because since you do work generally in isolation, you don't want to totally cut yourself off from 
all other social interactions. I think that's actually a really bad move. Um, but I think you need to, once again, sort of prioritize it. If you're in that sort of zone where I'm like, I have to get this video edited by tonight. So the sooner I get it done, the, the, the sooner it's off my sort of plate and the it's not hanging over my head. Um, in that sort of time, I probably wouldn't socialize with the friends too much. Like if they're messaging me, I probably wouldn't respond straight away. But if I am sort of in a doing a task that's not super like important, um, I think it is important to connect because you do feel isolated. You do want to connect with people. Um, and what I generally like to do as well is if I have a day where um, I've done my urgent work in the morning, I might go out and have lunch with a friend or an afternoon coffee and just take two hours to like get out of the house and um, see someone. And the problem is in this current climate, I can't really do that. So I do think it is important to spend some time socializing. Otherwise, you sort of go a bit stir crazy, but just make sure you do it after you've done the task at hand. You don't want to spend the day socializing and then realize, shit, I haven't done my work and it's, you know, nearly six o'clock and what am I going to do when I'm going to be up all night finishing work? Just do the work first and then socialize. And it's sort of like a reward. So some days where I know that I've got really long work days, so especially um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays for me, I know that on Thursdays and Fridays, I generally try to take an hour or two um, to get out of the house and maybe socialize um, just to sort of compensate for me, for me sort of knuckling down and not really um, doing anything but work um, and for long hours. Like often on Wednesdays, I might work for like 12 hours. So I see that on a Thursday or Friday, I can cut down some of my hours and um, use that to socialize because that's sort of how you have to balance it. But if you are that kind of person that um, is always glued to social media, like turn it off. I've got no alerts on my phone that happens. I do have all my sort of stuff connected to my computer. So when I'm on my computer and I'm editing or I'm doing emails or I'm doing something, if I have a text message come through, if I have a WhatsApp message that comes through, I can usually see it on the screen. Um, and if I'm busy, I'll ignore it. If it's important, I'll, you know, reply to it, but I won't let myself sort of get into uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, Facebook or Instagram sort of um, deep dive unless I um, am sort of on top of work. So yeah, it's a balance about keeping connected and staying sort of sane while also um, not getting too distracted by it. And that is a balance you have to strike. But yeah, I feel like turning off alerts on things is really good. Um, I actually have, even though I usually have Facebook open so I can see messages that come through because that's how I talk to Haley and that's how we sort of like uh, figure out plans and discuss work stuff. Um, I actually have all Facebook alerts off. So if someone tags me in something or someone posts something or whatever it happens to be, um, I actually have to go into Facebook and see it. Um, so I feel like turning off alerts really helps sort of stops stops the distraction. But at the same time, if you need to check in with people and, and socialize, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a healthy thing to want to do. Just don't let it like overwhelm you. Okay, Bryn asked, do you find having background noise like music or podcasts helps you accomplish more or distracts you? Now, that's going to be a completely personal thing for you. Uh, for me, I find it really distracts me with the work that I do. So um, because I mainly do editing or um, I do sort of I research things and I'm trying to um, find information, I do find having music on and podcasts on. I just I feel like it's it, I can't think. So especially if I'm trying to listen to editing and I'm trying to like cut things, I'm trying to I just find it insufferable having music on. So I never listen to music. But at the same time, when I used to um, work full time in an office and I was doing contracts and they were really easy to just kind of type out and just look at information, um, I actually really enjoyed listening to podcasts because it cut out the background noise. So um, yeah, I feel like it's, it just depends on who you are and the work you're doing. If you miss some noise, there's nothing wrong with putting music on if it doesn't distract you. But if you find that you're focusing on the music or you're struggling with uh, focusing on your work because there's music, like just turn it off. There's nothing wrong with having a quiet workplace. I had a lot of people asking about how to stop yourself from like constantly wanting to snack. Um, and I think that's a funny one because um, 
I think any sort of office job where you're confined to a desk, you end up wanting to snack. I found I probably gained so much weight when I uh, went from like studying and uh, doing a bit of an active job to working full time in an office job. So I think if you are the kind of person that finds yourself, you walk around a lot at work and then all of a sudden you um, are sitting just at a desk all day, you're going to want a snack and it's a thing. I just, I don't think you can necessarily avoid it. Like I don't snack too much. There are days where I snack more than others. Like my long, long editing day where I'm often behind the computer for a minimum of eight, sometimes 10, 12 hours. Um, I do sort of want a snack, but I feel like the best way to combat that is just have better snacks. So just be prepared. Like I really like having apples and like carrots and stuff and chopping them up and just before I get too hungry and start craving heaps of sugar, um, you know, you just have those sort of healthy snacks. So it's not really a working for like people saying that this is a temptation because the fridge is there and that's fair, but you can also determine what's in the fridge, if that makes sense. So I just see it as being, that's just an office job issue. Um, but I do find, like, I totally understand. But once again, it's something that you sort of adapt to. Um, a few people asking about, like, cooking. Like, how do I sort of, what, do I do meal prep and stuff for lunch? I don't. I should. Um, but I'm not a meal prepper. I just, I just don't. Um, and so what I tend to do is I have, like, a variety of different breakfasts. So whether it's toast or cereal or porridge or I don't know, whatever it happens to be, smoothie, whatever. But I always tend to have something like a sandwich for lunch. It's just like a salad and cheese sandwich. It's something that's quick. Uh, if I need to eat it at my computer, I can because I am one of those people that tend to um, eat at their computer. I always have been. It's just it is what it is. But if you are concerned about what snacks you have in the house, just don't keep them in the house. But I think because sitting at a computer all day or working from home all day does take a bit of like self-control and effort, I do think you'll find that you will be snacking a bit more. So just try to make them healthier. So we talked before about people wanting to stay in their pajamas all day and not wear makeup. And then I have a few people saying that they find it hard to actually rain in the time it takes them to get ready so they sort of find themselves um, playing with makeup or doing skincare and then all of a sudden um, I think I've just used up my thing no is it it's not really coming out whatever um, so they, and then they say that they um, it's like 11 o'clock and they've got like crazy makeup on and they haven't started work yet um, I do think you know I think that just means that you're a makeup lover and you're excited to play with makeup and have the time but um, yeah, I think you can just sort of give yourself a certain amount of time where you're like, okay, I'm going to start my makeup at 8.30 and I want it done by nine and I want to be at my computer working at nine. And that's just a, sort of like a discipline thing. So this makeup that I'm taking forever to do because I'm talking to you guys, realistically, if I was just sitting at my desk doing it by myself, it would take me 10 minutes. So that... I, you sort of just get into a routine of, um, okay, I can do this much in this time um, and I'm cool with that and that's all I want to do. A few other people were asking about like, how do I not look like shit on conference calls? And again, you don't need heaps of makeup. It's just like, I've got a powder makeup on, concealer, blush, bronzer, no highlighter, done my brows, quick eyeshadow, mascara. Uh, it didn't take me very long. I'm going to put a lip gloss on. Project Pan lip gloss, go me. I think all these products are pretty much Project Pan almost. So for example, if I had to do a conference call with this makeup, I wouldn't look my best, but at the same time, I wouldn't look like I'm sick or that I'm tired or that I've just woken up. So I do feel like an element of feeling a bit fresh really helps you with your work, whether you're facing people or not, whether you're doing conference calls or not. Conference conference calls, again, like it, they're pretty low resolution. You don't need like crazy makeup. Um, also, you're working from home. People know that. So they don't expect you to wear like a winged liner and a red lip or whatever it happens to be, even if that's what you wear to your office normally. But I feel like a little bit of effort does just make you feel a little bit better. So I, I think it's worth it. But again, I think that comes down to the person. So if, you're not, if you don't wear makeup to work, don't wear makeup at home to work. But if you do wear makeup to work and that helps you get into the mood, um, I, I recommend doing it. So we, I did have a few other people uh, sort of touch on a point that I think is going to be really hard for everyone um, 
in this current pandemic. Um, and it's going to be hard on me as well. And it's the lack of being able to go outside and socialize. So, you know, if you, a lot of people ask about motivation and how to do your work and whatnot. But there were a few people asking about how to stay happy and how to um, balance socializing and stuff like that. And normally what I would say, like I said before, is I would try to go out at least a couple of times a week for a coffee with a friend for like two hours or something just to sort of get out of the house and break things up and connect and like I'm lucky though because like Haley comes over one to two times a week um, so I do have some socializing um, but it is really important to get out of the house so you don't have cabin fever and you can maintain connections with people but unfortunately in this current climate that is making it like we can't do that. So that's the thing that I think people are going to struggle with is is the isolation. And no matter what you do, I don't think um, like I don't think you can like I've got any tips on how to fix that except for trying to stay connected with people. But we're going to go batshit crazy. It is what it is. Being stuck at home sucks. Um, and at least, you know, if I'm having a week where I feel like I'm really bogged down, I'm just stuck at home. I will make an effort to take myself out somewhere, like whether it's um, running a few errands and, you know, browsing at things in the shops or whether it's, you know, catching up with my mum for lunch or catching up with Simon for a coffee or whatever it happens to be. I try to break up my week by finding like making an event out of something as simple as like going to the supermarket or, you know, browsing the shops. So I really make an effort to do that to really help myself not feel claustrophobic. But I think we're all going to feel claustrophobic in this current setting. Um, so I can't really give you many tips on that. Um, but maybe go for a walk or something. Or if you can, if you can access a cafe that has takeaway coffee, um, you know, maybe just get a coffee and go for a walk. Or I like to also, if I need to go to the supermarket or the post office and I feel like I'm really stuck um, at home and I've been home a lot, I will make sure I walk there just so I get out of the house I get a bit of activity and I get a bit of fresh air. So uh, instead of driving everywhere, I like to just try to yeah take the time to be like, no, I'm walking to the shops because it gets me out. It get, gives me a bit of a break. So you can still do that um, in this current climate. So um, yeah, you really do have to make an effort to um, stop yourself from going a bit crazy. So the social isolation is going to be hard on everyone. So, you know, it is what it is. But um, I think the the way to stay motivated and to actually be productive working at home and not feel like an absolute slob every single day is by um, sort of getting rid of those notions that working from home is, you know, you sleep in, you work in bed, you don't get dressed, you, you know, eat all the snacks and somehow you're just as productive as you normally are. Like that's never going to happen. That's just going to make you feel like a piece of shit by the end of the day or by the end of the week. So um, definitely you need to um, see what the actual benefits of working from home are, which is no travel time. So you can actually sleep in a little bit longer. Um, so I used to get up at like 7, 7.30 um, to go to work in an office job because it used to take me about an hour in traveling. Whereas now I wake up at 8, 8.30 because it takes me 20 seconds to walk to my computer. So, um, you know, reduction in travel time, uh, more sleep, which is always great. You don't have your boss like looking over your shoulder all the time. Um, you don't have to deal with office politics and whatnot. You can wear comfier clothes. Um, so there are perks to working at home and you can be just as productive, if not more productive working from home. But you really need to make sure you get up at a decent time, have breakfast, you know, get ready, like legitimately get ready, then break down your day in tasks. So get the important tasks done first while you're most motivated. Um, and then, you know, you can start slacking off a bit with socializing and household things and whatnot, if you know you've got your work done. So, you know, you can definitely do it. And I think um, it's it once you get into the routine, you'll be a lot easier. Anyway, I don't know if that was helpful at all, but um, that is an example of sort of basic makeup that I wear on a daily basis when I'm not um, filming and I just want to sort of feel like, yep, I've been I've put myself together. I can face the day. I can get work done. Um, and I do it for me. Um, it's not about you know, trying to impress other people or try to wear makeup for other people or try to wear a bra for other people. I just know that it puts me in a headspace where I feel like I'm a functioning human and um, I can get shit done and I'm more inclined to get shit done. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.